Did you know that we as children's authors have the unique opportunity to make our title page something truly special and that the title page can sometimes speak volumes even before our actual story begins? That's what this video is all about. Hi there, I'm Evie, an award-winning children's author and ghostwriter over on eviejones.com and the creator of Children's Book University. I create videos specifically for children's authors, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss my weekly videos. In this video, we'll look at what a title page is, where to place it in our children's book, very important, the number one element of a title page we want to make sure to use properly to instantly elevate and make our children's book look more professional when exactly to design our title page during the book creation process, and the eight main layout designs to help us come up with our very own title page idea. And some of these will actually be ways to help us stay within our budget by saving us money during the illustration process. So let's jump right in. What is a title page? One of the first pages we usually see when we open a children's book is the title page. Oftentimes, many aspiring authors confuse the title page with the front cover, so it's important to note that they are not the same. The front cover is on the outside of our book, while the title page is on the inside. There are four main elements we will want to make sure to include on our title page, and that's the title of our book, the subtitle of our book, if it has one, the names of the author and the illustrator, and a visual component like an illustration. And there are two optional elements we can add to our title page if we choose to do so. And that would be the series title if our book is part of a series and the name of our imprint if we have one. And that can be either the name of our imprint or just its logo. If you have any questions regarding imprints and whether or not you should create one, make sure to watch my separate video on that linked in the description below. Now, where exactly should we place our title page in our children's book? Here I have created a whole separate video on the best order of all the pages in our book, especially those that come before and after our actual story. So I will make sure to share the link to it in the description below as well. But in short, our title page is always placed right before our actual story begins, and it is always on the right side. So if we were to open a book and have a left and right page facing each other, our title page would always be on that right page. And if we should decide to include page numbers in our book, a title page always omits that number, meaning that while our title page does count, an actual page number is generally not printed on a title page. It's implied. And if you're looking for more information on page numbers, make sure to watch my separate video on that, again, linked in the description below. Now, looking at a title page, what is the number one element we can use to instantly elevate and make our children's book look more professional? Well, let's look at two examples. The book Pig the Stinker by Aaron Blaby and The Great Revelation by Thomas Roberts. Both covers use very distinctive fonts and styles for their titles. So what do their corresponding title pages look like? In the middle here, we see a title page version that uses a regular font for the title. And on the right, we see a title page version that uses the exact same font and style for the title as we see it on the actual cover. Now, seeing these two options, which one makes our book look more cohesive and part of a whole that would help our pages to truly fit together? It's the second version, right? So my first ninja tip is this. Make the title look exactly the same on both the cover and the title page. While the color and the font size may be different, the style and the actual font itself should stay exactly the same. And so looking at traditionally published children's books, we'll find that the majority of them will do exactly the same. The title displayed on the title page will mirror the way the title is shown on the cover. And so by mimicking this design element, we make our children's book instantly look more professional and and instantly more pulled together. Now, if you need help with the actual cover design or need help with what you should name your book to make potential readers find it more easily on places like Amazon, I have added links to a separate video as well as my perfect title formula in the description below that will help you with just that. But let's get to the truly fun part. Let's look at eight creative layout designs for our title page to help us come up with our very own title page idea. These will include two options that will actually help us stay within our budget by saving us money during the illustration process. And the last one of these eight layout designs is my favorite one because it's just so creative. 
The first layout or image design idea for our title page is the most obvious one. So we'll start with this one. And that's to simply show our main character or characters. And that can be a full bleed illustration or a spot illustration of that main character. A great example of this would be the book, The Magic of Choice, co-written by the former columnist on Oprah.com, Susie Moore, and myself. Here we see the title lettering, which is the exact same as on the cover, including the location, the size, and the color of the title. And then we see the little girl and her teddy bear, the two main characters of the story. And so showing our main characters already on the title page is a beautiful visual way to ease our little readers into our story. The second layout or image design idea for our title page is to show a secondary or recurring character. And I love this one because we can have so much fun with this. A beautiful example is the book Ada Twist Scientist by Andrea Beattie. First of all, we see that the title lettering is again the exact same as on the cover in terms of the location, the font, and the size. The only difference is the font color. Now the illustration on the title page is of a cat. And the reason I love this is because while this cat is not a main character, it does appear on most pages within the book. The cat is always kept in the background, beautifully integrated into the illustrations. And little readers would have to actively look for it to find it on each of the pages. And so presenting the cat this way on the title page is just such a beautiful, clever, yet so very subtle way by the illustrator to tie this title page to the rest of the story. I love when children's books do that. The Little Critter series by Mercer Mayer is one of my favorite examples of this way of tying a story together. If you have a Little Critters book in your home, go have a look and you'll find that on every single page we'll either have a little frog, a mouse, or a spider hidden somewhere. When my boys were little and we read these Little Critters books, it was always one of our most favorite activities to look for these special characters. And so that's just such a wonderful additional layer of a children's book. The third layout or image design idea for our title page is to show an important element of the story. So here the illustration is usually not a character but an object. The perfect example here is from the book My Shadow is Pink by Scott Stewart. Here again we see the exact same title lettering as on the cover in terms of the location, the font, and the size. The only difference is the font color. Now here the illustration is addressed a very important element to the story. So showcasing an element of our story this way gives it immediate emphasis or importance. Our readers may not yet know the part this object may play in our story, but it's already being introduced visually. And again, that's just such a wonderful way to begin our story. The fourth layout or image design idea for our title page is to simply take an element from one of our interior illustrations and then showcase it on our title page. Here this often means that we take a full bleed image and then use parts of it as a spot illustration. The perfect example here is one of my own books Forever My Always, a book meant to be gifted to graduates. Here again we see the exact same title lettering as on the cover in terms of the font and the color and the only difference is is the sizing. Now this is where my second ninja tip comes in. Because we are essentially reusing an already created illustration means the illustrator doesn't have to create a separate illustration for us, which in turn of course means that we have to pay for one less illustration. So if we have to meet a specific budget, this might be a helpful way to do so. And this is also why I personally recommend to wait with the layout design of our title page until the very end of our book creation process or certainly until the very end of the illustration process. If you have watched my separate video I've created about the cover design for our children's book, you may remember that I do the same for all of my cover images. These two parts of my book, the cover and the title page, are the very last images I request from my illustrator. And that's because after having seen all the illustrations for the interior of my book, I may decide that I don't need any separate illustrations because I can simply reuse those that have already been created. 
The fifth layout or image design idea for our title page is to show a continuation of our cover scene. The perfect example here is from the book Isabella, Star of the Story by Jennifer Fosbury. This one is similar to the first layout idea because it showcases our main character again, but it takes that first layout idea a step further by being a continuation of the image that we see on the cover. So on the cover, we see Isabella sitting on a stack of books reading. On the title page, however, we see Isabella carrying this very stack of books. And now instead of her sitting on top of that stack, it's her teddy bear. And I think this is such a beautiful use of the title page and such a beautiful way of transitioning into the story. The sixth layout or image design idea for our title page is to show a background only without any specific illustrations. This again is such a budget friendly option because the illustrator doesn't have to be involved in creating this page. The first perfect example here to the left is the book Say Something by Peter H. Reynolds, one of my favorite illustrators. Here the title is very much the same in terms of the font and the sizing and, and all we see is a slightly altered speech bubble and a pattern patterned background. It seems so simple, yet it ties beautifully into the rest of the story because each page within the book has a speech bubble atop a differently colored and differently patterned background. And the second example is one of my own books called The Girl That Makes Mistakes. The font and the size of the title is again the same, just the alignment, the positioning, and some of the font colors are different in order to help it stick out from the background. And the background here is simply the repetition of the title over and over again with very vague coloring, so it blends into the background and doesn't compete with the title lettering. And the reason I went with this layout or design was to really draw attention to the title itself. That was really important to me. And I really love how it turned out. The seventh layout or image design idea for our title page is to have our story begin directly on the title page, either with or without any wording. The perfect example for such a title page with wording is from the book The World Needs More Purple People by Kristen Bell and Benjamin Hart. Here, the title page has the normal elements of most title pages, including the title, the author, and the illustrator using the exact same font. But our story actually begins on this page. And in this example, it's the main character speaking directly to little readers drawing them into the story right away. And a fantastic example for such title page without any wording is from the book On Account of the Gum by Adam Rex. Here we see the title lettering, which is the exact same as on the cover, including the size of the title. And we see the main character walking with a hand in his hair already hinting toward what he may find on his head. And on the very next page, we see what the character had discovered on the head, which is gum in his hair. So again, this book makes great use of its title page by visually jumping right into the story. And the eighth and my absolute favorite layout or image design idea for our title page is to really integrate our title page by making it part of our story, even more so than any of the other layouts I have already shared with you. And it's my absolute favorite because it's the most creative. And the perfect example here is from the book After the Fall by Dan Santet. So here we see the cover, the title page, and the first page of the story. I don't even know if most people notice and if the illustrator has been given enough credit, but this is such a beautifully creative way to use the cover and the title page to begin telling a story right away. The details are just amazing because notice how besides us seeing how Humpty Dumpty first sits on the wall, then starts to fall, and then being completely gone, we see little elements like the binoculars that were first held by Humpty Dumpty on the cover, then were dropped on the title page, and then have fallen towards the ground on the first story page. And the birds tie it together even further. This is just so good and so incredibly creative. I love seeing creativity displayed this way. So there was absolutely no page wasted and we got to the visual storytelling right away. So these are the eight main patterns I have observed and identified over the years. So I really hope that you see how truly special we can make our title page as children's authors. And so my number one takeaway I hope that you've gotten from watching this video is this. Just like what I have shared in my video that was all about how to use dedications in our book to our advantage, if we use each and every element of our books with intention, with a purpose, we can make our story in our books so much 
much better and even more creative. It's those little things that can truly make such a difference and being intentional about them. Be it the title of our book, be it our dedication that we are sharing in our book, be it the wording of our book description. Creating each of these elements with intention will set us apart from all the rest who put these things together without really thinking about them. Which is why I have created separate videos for each of these elements. How to choose the best title of our book, including what fonts to use, how to create a cover that sticks out, how to write the best and most meaningful dedication, how to write the most impactful book description, and now also how to put together the best title page. I've added the links to all these separate videos in the description below, so make sure not to miss them. I hope you found this video on crafting your very own title page so, so helpful. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't yet. It really encourages me to keep making free videos for you just like this one. Here's to your beautiful creative title page. Bye!